This video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community. As we sit here in the blacksmith shop, having our little chats at the beginning and at the end of the video, a lot of people ask about this thing right there. That is a wheelwright's traveler. And that's a device used to measure the circumference of a wagon wheel so that you can forge an iron tire. This one is a mass-produced item and it has the name of the manufacturer cast in it. That would be Wiley A. Russell Manufacturing Company, Greenville, Massachusetts. But we're going to go ahead and forge one. We're going to do it all traditionally. Certainly you could laser cut or plasma cut this wheel out and save yourself the trouble of forge welding a ring, but where's the fun in that? I'm going to base this around this little piece of pipe that I found. I'm going to use this to shape the ring. I have a cone mandrel, but not everybody does. So I just found this in my scrap pile. This is four and a half inches in diameter, which makes it about 115 millimeters in diameter. And I'm going to use half inch wide material, roughly 13 millimeter wide material. None of this is absolutely critical. If you've got material of a little bit different dimension than I have, use what you have, make it fit the way what you want it to be. It's going to be smaller than this one. If you want one bigger than this one, make it all bigger. Back to the measurements. Because it's half inch material, I need to add a half inch to that measurement. So that's five inches to the center line. So you're adding a quarter inch to the center line on one side, quarter inch to the center line on the other side, makes it half inch or five inches. So some basic math here, pi r squared, the radius of that five inch diameter circle, don't listen to that guy. He doesn't have any idea what he's talking about. Pi r squared is the area of a circle. To find the circumference of a circle, it's really the diameter times pi. So 5 inches times 3.14. That gives us 15.7. But I had my head in the clouds there until I got to this point and realized my mistake. So my original plan, using the pipe as a mandrel, isn't going to work out. But I'll still explain what I had in mind with that when we get to that point. And of course, it isn't absolutely critical. So once we get the ring shaped and forge welded together, we'll need to forge weld in the spoke. I also made that five and a half inches. We will need a handle, and I'm going to use some quarter by three quarters. So what is it, six mil? Oh, this is eighth inch, so that's roughly three mil. The handle, I'm starting with a piece of quarter by three quarter. So roughly six mil by 20 mil. And then this has a little movable pointer on the inside. That's part of the measuring system. You need that to set your second point when you're measuring something. And we'll make that out of a piece of eighth by three quarter just so I can get a nice center piece and then we'll make a pointer out of it. So the first thing we need to do is form the scarf on the first end. Then we'll start to bend that end up, turn it around, repeat on the other side, and then bring the two ends together. This will be a little less likely to buckle as I do the upset if I work at the vise. This eighth inch material can be really uncooperative trying to edge bend it like this. Making this out of 3 16 by half or even quarter by half would be easier, but it would be a considerably heavier tool, and I don't know that it needs to be. Now because of my mistake at the beginning, we can't use this pipe as our final forming mandrel. If I had a piece of pipe the exact right size, I'd go ahead and show you what I had in mind. But I don't have anything exactly that size. My idea is to cut a notch in this that corresponds with the spoke so that when we have that welded up, we've got something to clean up this transition and can still work it round. Or you could make something that's about a third of this diameter 
just out of flat bar and that would do the job as well. We will have to cut a new spoke though. Anyways, we've got the scarfs overlapped and we'll weld this and draw it out just a little bit. I want to leave that thick for now because I'll weld my spoke right into that forge weld. But I will wait to get a measurement on the spoke till I've got this all done. Then, then we're sure that'll at least fit. But before we heat this up to welding heat, let's go ahead and clean out the fire because it's probably got a few clinkers in here by now. Always pays to start with a fresh fire if you're welding in coal or coke or even charcoal. Get it cleaned out. There's always some impurities. So with a nice fresh fire, we can go ahead and start heating this up. Be gentle, this will be easy to burn. Use a little bit of flux in there. It heats up. We want to measure this to figure out what we need for our spoke. I think the easiest way to do that is just to take our piece for the spoke. I'm going to go from the outside to the inside. That way it'll be cut halfway through. And with the scarves, it'll come almost all the way to the edge. And we'll just cut that off cold. This then needs the same style of scarf that was on the ring. You've already seen that done, so I'll just go ahead and do this and use a ball peen hammer and just pull a little bit out here to kind of form a scarf on the inside of the ring. And then this bar will sit right in there like that. So now the trick will be keeping this in place while we get the weld. So to do that, I'll Hold it in the tongs, and I'll put a tong clip on there, and hopefully that's going to be tight enough to keep that from wanting to slip. Be iffy, that tong clip's not real tight. These are really flexible tongs, but I think we'll be okay. And again, as this comes up to heat, we'll put just a little bit of flux on it. The main purpose of flux is for cleanliness. It melts and seals up the weld area so that it doesn't scale so badly. And then the molten flux carries any dirt and crud away when the first strike the hammer to the weld, all that molten flux squirts out of there. When you see what looks like sparks during welding, that's frequently just molten flux. Just flattening the ring down around the weld area while it's hot. But we need to find the center point of our ring. Ended up with a 7 inch outer diameter ring, so it's real easy to find a center point for. I'm going to center punch that. Now we could drill a hole in this for our axle, but I think that would leave too thin a wall on either side and it would eventually wear out and break. So I want to punch all the way through, but I want to leave as much material as I can. So I don't actually want to remove any. So I'm going to punch through with the center punch till it bottoms out, turn it over, do that again. And that should create a place then that's a big enough hole to drive a drift through. Let's see if they'll let this drive through yet. Ended up a little off center, but I think it's still better than if we just drilled it in the first place. It's a little undersized still, 
So I'll open it up with a file and just file out the fat spot there. I would like to take a moment and thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video here at Black Bear Forge. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to choose from. Now currently I'm taking some classes in video editing, switched to a completely new editing platform. I really needed some information on how to learn to use my new editing software. So I went to Skillshare, did a search for what I wanted to learn, and lots of options came up. I could refine that search based on beginner, intermediate, or advanced level classes. So if you're interested in learning a new skill or just want to learn more about something you're already involved with, check out Skillshare. They have lots to offer. Skillshare premium membership is less than $10 per month. The first thousand people that use the link in my video description will receive a free trial offer of Skillshare premium. Now back to work on our Wheelwrights Traveler. The next thing I'm going to work on is the little rotating pointer. So the final piece that needs to be forged is going to be the handle and it has to have a fork. So I'm going to isolate some mass down here so that I've got a large place I can drill a hole through and mount this. Thin it out a little bit here so it's long enough to get past the, the circle. Do that on both ends and I'm going to fold it in half and forge weld the middle, draw that forge weld out to a tang. I'm going to bend this in half and make sure I line up the two pads on either end. Any other irregularities I can file out later. kind of eyeball where I could weld to. I'd hate to weld so far that I can't make this work. I can weld all of that section, the last inch and a half pretty much. I'm going to square this up so that I've got a square section above the legs here. shoulder this and draw out a tang. Not getting in very close down here, and that could be a stress point. So I'm going to put a flat die in the guillotine tool and clean that up. That helps quite a bit.
the tang will get set in a wooden handle and I'll wait to separate the legs to fit around the wheel till after I've cleaned them up and made sure they're the exact same profile. I'll make sure these are evened up a little bit. The ends aren't quite even, but we can fix that by filing or grinding, whatever your preference is. What's getting later in the day, starting to cool off? They're actually predicting some snow later this week, so we'll see what comes with that. So I'm going to let those forgings cool for the night. I'm going to see if Janet wants to run to town and get some Chinese takeout. And then I'll pick this video up again next week, and we'll see if we can finish our blacksmith or wheelwrights traveler and actually have a good functional tool to use. I do appreciate you stopping by. This channel would not be accessed without you folks, the viewers. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit the subscribe button, but then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video. Thank you.